Hey, hello everyone and uh, welcome to our third and last class breakdown. Today we are going to inspect the Arthurians. If you think back to Dark Age of Camelot, uh, we are looking at Albion here. The realm of the Arthurians is a noble and righteous realm. They honor the King Arthur and would follow him until the end of the world, in order to save the world. They believe in integrity and everyone can join them, as long as their intent is always noble. Like every other realm, we have here are 7 races to choose from and 10 classes. So let's go ahead with the introductions of the races. We have the Cade Sith. The Whale Storms changed the lines forever. Lithe but powerful, the Cade Sith are fiercely unforgiving in their defense of themselves or their skin when threatened. The Gargoyles. They were the guardians of the Eternal, the Watchers and the Walls. Now the Gargoyles have come to life to seek something they cannot name. A harmony of the world that none can yet express. The humans. Through luck or perhaps something more, a few humans managed to escape the Wildstorm influence entirely. They did not change into something else and were untouched by the world's wrath, as though chosen for a special purpose. The Storm Riders. Famous for their fearlessness in face of the raging Wildstorm, the Storm Riders are warriors for, with a purpose, unstoppable in Arthur's service. With a culture of duty and honor, the Storm Riders see the world in black and white terms. There is devotion to Arthur and his vision to rebuild Camelot, and then there is everything else. The Strym. The Scaly Strym are one of the most enigmatic races in all realms. Their origins are clouded in rumor and mystery, and the Strym are the only too happy to keep it that way. The Golems. Giants of clay and fire. The Golems are known as the Clint Born. They are the mighty builders and can transform their bodies into defenses for the realm. And lastly the Picts. Well before the first breaking of the world, the Picts were pirates and raiders. The Picts have a matrilineal society and it's said their lineage includes many women, even back in the old days, who were both warriors and mothers, leaders and caregivers of the tribe. As always, if you are into lore and the story behind the races and the realm itself, check out the official Camelot Unchained page to find out more. They have plenty of story material for you lore lovers. For now, let's jump into the classes. Here we have the Abbot. The Abbot is a beer drinking melee to mid range fighter. He is using crushing weapons and can't use any piercing or slashing type of weapons. He gains increased damage and healing based on the number of nearby group members. When he gulps down his beer, he is gaining increased movement speed and reduced ability preparation and recovery time. He can buff the magic damage of group members and reduce ability and recovery times of them. The Blackguard. This class is an archer through and through. He has none or very few ranged abilities and thus excels in ranged attacks. He has armor penetrating arrow skills, is able to do damage on living targets based on the total amount of health they are missing and can also discard all of his arrows in his quiver to make a powerful shot with a power based on the number of arrows discarded. The Black Knight. The Black Knight is the only heavy fighter with passive damage mitigation and regeneration. This will be your to-go tank in the front lines of the battlefield. On top of that, he has a shout to increase his mitigation even further. His damage will be moderate, since his tanking abilities are none to other. He can also curse nearby enemies, which applies a physical debuff that reduces the power of enemies' damage. The Dreadcaller. This is one of the more interesting classes to me. The Dreadcaller can summon souls of dead criminals that fight along him. His abilities will include souls of a great fighter with a sword, a criminal soul that uses mind and shadow magic, and also a soul that acts as a tank with protective abilities. The interaction between the user and the pets are interesting. When the user's pets deal damage, the user is healed. When the user's pets deal disruption, it restores the user's blood. This makes soul interaction an important strategic choice according to the enemy you are fighting and the allies within your group. The Enchanted Knight. The Enchanted Knight is the shapeshifter class of the Ethereum realm. This is also a super exciting class to me. He can transform into three different shapes, a griffin, a basilisk and into a demon. Based on the transformation he will have obviously different abilities. In the griffin form he will be able to do slashing and piercing damage and pierce the target's armor. The basilisk form is a more of a control debuff form. He inflicts poison debuffs that reduce the amount of healing the target will receive. If the target is being attacked, the duration of the debuff is extended. 
Then he has a channeling stunning effect, which immobilizes the target and reduces its movement speed and increases the preparation and recovery times of the target's abilities. The longer he channels, the greater the effect. His last form, the Demon, has the highest damaging abilities of his arsenal. He does Chaos damage and increased damage against spirit targets. When switching forms, he retains the bonuses of the previous forms, and the longer he remains in a form, the stronger his abilities get. The Flame Burden This Arthurian mage reminds me a lot of a mix of the Warlock and Dark Age of Camelot and the Bright uh, or Fire Wizard in Warhammer, Age of Reconning. This class does increasingly high amounts of fire damage with its spells. They lose health as they use strong abilities, so the healers need to keep them up. And as they keep using abilities, they build up Pyroclastic Overcharge, which, when expanded, results in a devastating high damaging magic attack. The Minstrel is the equivalent of the Skald on the Viking side and the Dark Fool on the Tuatha de Danan side. But unlike their fellows, his songs become weaker the longer they are being played. Thus, he will be forced to constantly switch them. As usual, he has a speed song, which breaks on combat conduct, an aura that damages nearby enemies and debuffs them and possibly also a DPS song. The more enemies are in the area, the stronger his songs will be. The Physician This is the primary healer class of the Noble Realm. He throws potions, which are projectile based onto its allies and to heal and cure them. He has no buffing abilities, so his spells only apply healing, healing and regeneration and wound curing. The more potions he uses, the greater his pool of alchemical accumulations becomes. He then can overcharge to use that pool for more powerful effects of his healing abilities. The Spectre, another scout class with uh, very slim information, since we don't know at all how these classes will be played out and interact in the game. It can transition between its own character view or that of a spectral body, which it uses for scouting. While the player remains in spectral mode, the main character is losing blood, determined by the distance between the two. He has debuffs and free abilities to use against his enemies. Coming to our last class of the Arthurians, the Whale Stalker, a Stealther. While within the Whale, he regenerates so called Arcane Charges, which enhances his abilities. Once he steps out of the veil, the charges are being drained, so he will want to initiate his attack as soon as possible. There was very little information about the Stealther class compared to other from other realms. Alright folks, this concludes the last installment of the Camelot Unchained realm and class introductions. This realm seems to be the most well-rounded of the three to me. While the Vikings are charging into the battlefield with high burst damage and the Tuatha de Danan thrive over a moving deadly battlefield who seek death and decay to use it to their advantage, the Arthurians seem to be pretty defensive and would appear to have a huge advantage in the sustain department to fight consistently over a long period of time. So once more information becomes available I will do an in-depth class and realm analysis of all three realms. What do you guys think of this realm? As always, Please like and subscribe if you like the content and check out my other videos if you want to learn more about the Vikings and the Tuatha de Danann Realm. What would you like to see next? Let me know in the comments. Peace out.